Hey guys, Aaron here. I have a custom knife review for you today. Um, this is the Calavera Cutlery or Jeremy Robertson El Patron. Um, this is the large size left-handed flipper, um, Tanto blade, really, really nice knife. Um, but before we get too far into that, I wanna talk a little bit about um, something that's going on in the knife world right now. Um, knife makers, custom knife makers, or some people might call them knife manufacturers, are making their knives primarily by machine. Um, in large runs sometimes with customizable options, uh, and they're calling them custom knives. And this, this is rubbing some people the wrong way because it's not, you know, custom or bespoke or something like that. And I would argue now that the phrase custom knife just means something different in, in the society and the culture that we're operating in. I believe it's sort of a semantic argument at this point. Um, by popular definition, this is a custom knife. Um, the blade is hand ground. The knife is made in a shop by one guy. Uh, it's created using most modern methods available, so it's water jet and CNC and you know any other sort of modern convenience that he has. Um, when I ordered my El Patron from Jeremy, I was able to pick two things, blade shape and blade finish. So I could either get a tanto or a drop point and then I could choose if I wanted acid stone washed or satin. Um, it was gonna be a flipper, it was gonna be a large, and it was gonna be PD-1 blade steel. So, that's it. You know, was this technically a 100% custom, uh, bespoke, made to my specification knife? No. But in the vernacular that makes up the custom knife world these days, this is a full custom. Um, that whole argument is made a whole lot more complicated now with terms like mid tech and quarter tech and whatever the UHEP that Hoback. Love Jake, but whatever that is, I can't even know what that um, that stands for. But all these other terms are being tossed into the mix. Um, I think even Tashi Baraka is doing Ultra Techs, um, and uh, it just is confusing. I don't have a solution to this problem, but I just wanted to briefly address it. Um, just because a guy uses CNC or uses a mill doesn't make them non-customs. Um, I don't know where you draw that line yet, which is something to think about. Anyway, some specs on this sucker. The blade is three and a half inches. That's um, specifically a three and a half inch cutting edge starting here. Um, I think Jeremy measures it to the handle so he calls them three and three quarter. Um, the overall length is 8.5 inches with a weight of 6.7 ounces. The blade steel is PD-1 tool steel. Um, the particular El Patron model that I have is his largest flipper. Um, he makes a medium and a small. Um, Jeremy designed these knives to be EDC workhorses, something that you could carry in your day-to-day, -day, capable of nearly anything that you needed to throw at it. Um, this is evidenced by how feature-rich this particular knife is. Um, and it's also worth, uh, worth pointing out that in spite of its intimidating size, this thing carries amazing. Um, let's go through this step-by-step, -step, shall we? The blade is a flat ground Tanto blade. The grind work on this particular knife is perfect. Ground down to a very thin edge with some meat behind the Tanto still. Um, with that fine thin edge you would be easily able to maintain this knife with a strop or eventually with stones or a wicked edge or even a Spyderco sharp maker if you needed to. Um, PD-1 is a tool steel. It's excellent when it comes to edge retention. Uh, it is, let me see, let me look at my notes here. Um, decently high carbon chromium steel. It has better wear resistance than that of D2, um, but is less stain resistant, so this thing will rust. And you can even see on mine, there are some spots. I flitz them off every so often. Um, and then I try and keep some uh, like Aegis knife solution on this thing. But all in all, it doesn't really mar up the appearance of it at all. It's only noticeable when you get really close to it. Um, but this is a knife that you're going to want to keep the blade oiled on. Um, trust me. 
If you live in a in a very salt watery, misty environment, this probably isn't for you. The steel that is. Um, in terms of cutting performance, everything that I have put it up to has served me really well. This fine edge will just curl paper off, will slice right through tape or food or anything like that. Um, I haven't come up against any super hard tasks, but I imagine to strip a wire or to cut through anything, this knife would be perfectly suited for it. The Tanto tip here you can see was left quite thick, and that is, you know, Tantos were designed for piercing, and I have no doubt that this would do that um, perfectly. So, um, handling the El Patron is awesome. Um, you can see that the handles here are two pieces of titanium that have been milled out um, and then uh, contoured or beveled along the edge for comfort. And then they have been tumbled to be completely deburred. Um, what I love about this finish that Jeremy has put on there is that you could carry this thing for years and it would um, it'll, it will never show anywhere. You can even see like getting it into the right light on the clip, there are scuffs on it that just basically don't even show. Um, the jimping on it, um, the best way to describe this jimping is simplistic. Um, it's a little rough, It's uh, but it'll do what you need it to do. The deployment of the El Patron is done by this large rounded flipper tab here. Um, I would love it if this had some tiny sharp jimping on it just so you wouldn't, oh, I almost cut myself. I didn't though, see? But just so you didn't like slip off or you didn't false, false start it like I did there into my hand. But when you push button it, every time. And it's also super smooth. But I would love it if there was just a little bit of jimping on that flipper tab. A um, Couple of the things that really aid to the smoothness of this knife is if you look, you can see that red down in there. That, are, that is the um, plastic disc that the captured ball bearings ride in. It's very similar to Kershaw's KVT system. And then in addition to that, your lockup is accomplished by a steel lock bar insert. You can see here, bolted on the lock bar there, engaging the lock there. And there's a great shot actually of the uh, um, bearing system. And all that stuff goes together, your lock bar, you know, the, the whole point behind steel lock bar inserts is to put equal hardness steels against each other so there's no galling. This lockup will never move. Um, it's just a good system. Complicated. You can see how they do it here. Hard to do, but pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else? I guess to kind of wrap this up, um, I think that the El Patron is a really awesome Hard use, heavy use, uh, overbuilt, if you will, EDC folder, but it's not done to a point that is um, overdone. Uh, it's something that's worth pausing to consider at least. Its maker, Jeremy Robertson, operates a knife company out of Southern California. Um, he's fairly quiet. He doesn't make a ton of noise in the knife world. And the result of this is that you can find these knives available. Um, as of the making of this video, there are three available on Blade HQ. Um, if it's something that you are interested in, there will be a link in the description that will take you straight to the page where they are, and you can snag one. Um, and if you miss it, Jeremy is constantly making and releasing new knives, making improvements. This is the Gen 3 or Gen 4 El Patron. Steel lock bar insert, captured ball bearings, all these things are upgrades, so you know the next generation is just gonna be better with more improvements. Um, Furthermore, if you do hit the link in the description and you make a purchase, whether it's an El Patron, a Spyderco Tenacious, or a Kershaw Blur, you will be helping me um, keep to, helping me to keep put out quality content like this, and uh, I would really appreciate it. Um, also, I have begun to do written reviews again, so if you there there will be another link in the description to my website. So if you would like to see better pictures and a little bit more in depth information hit that and uh, go check it out. Leave a comment on one of the blog posts and I would love to hear from you. So that's it guys. Um, I really appreciate it and uh, go check out some Jeremy Robertson knives. Thanks.